that's gaining popularity and adoption uh, across the industry for small microcontrollers. Uh, it's uh, available as a non-contributory uh, Apache 2 license for commercial and non-commercial use. Uh, it's also been adopted into another uh, a number of other projects as well. Uh, so the, the Zephyr and Embed OS operating systems, Google Minute, and also the ARM platform security architecture as well. So again, it's um, starting to become fairly standard um, for, for many, many projects. Uh, this uh, is because it's a um, uh, bootloader designed for small 32-bit microcontrollers, supports uh, signing the encryption of images so we can securely download uh, and upgrade devices remotely. Provides multi-image support, so again, if you're using something like platform security architecture, you have a couple of executable images that you need to, to maintain, and those can be managed independently. Uh, it's also power failure resistant, so if uh, you lose power partway through the upgrade, uh, it can resume and, and manage the upgrade. Uh, there's also a fallback mechanism, as we'll see, that um, if the upgrade doesn't take effect or the code doesn't boot correctly, um, it will be rolled back to uh, uh, the earlier original version. So on the, uh, the version that we've been experimenting with, which is the probably fairly um, comprehensive design, uh, it builds to about uh, 30k bytes, so will generally fit into the, uh, the boot sector of, of most microcontrollers. Uh, just to start with a little background theory um, on a Cortex-M microcontroller, the sort of layout that we'll have is to place the bootloader program on the, the, um, the native reset vector, um, and then the application code will sit higher in the, uh, the flash memory. So this will typically be set to uh, start at a, uh, another sector of flash. And the problem that we have here is that the application code uh, is now not sitting on the, the hardware interrupt vector table. Those are sitting down in, in the bootloader. So as part of the hardware of the Cortex-M microcontroller, uh, there's a register within the, the, um, the interrupt structure called the vector table offset register. And by programming uh, this register, we can relocate the hardware vector table from uh, zero, the native location, up into the application code. So with a single line of code in the system initializing code, uh, we can hand over control to the application code, relocate all the interrupt vectors, and then the code will just uh, execute as, as standard. Uh, also, to get out of the uh, bootloader and into the application, um, we need to examine the application image. So the first four bytes of the application image uh, contain the initial uh, main stack address. So during an, a, a hardware reset, the, normally the processor will read this and set up the main stack pointer. So when we um, uh, jump from our bootloader to the application code, we have to do this in software. So we read the first four bytes of the application uh, and then force that into the main stack pointer. And then the second four bytes um, is the address of the reset handler. So again, we need to uh, read that location and then that will be the entry point into the, the application. So when we hand over from the bootloader uh, into the application code, we have to sort of do a software simulation of the reset that's performed by the Cortex microcontroller normally. Also, the um, uh, MCU boot supports signing of our, um, our image. And the way this is actually done is that we'll take the image and we'll calculate a cryptographic hash of that image. So this is um, a cryptographically secure checksum. So this becomes a unique number uh, for our image, whatever plain text or image that we're, we're using. Uh, we can then use um, a, uh, a, a um, uh, asynchronous encryption, uh, sorry, <laughs> asymmetrical encryption. So for example, RSA, and we will encrypt the hash uh, using the, uh, the private key. Um, uh, then anybody that wants to validate that can use the public key, which is stored in the device uh, to decrypt uh, 
the uh, the stored hash uh, will now be able to read that original hash uh, we then calculate the hash of the image that's in the device and if the two match then we validated the image so we calculate a checksum we encrypt it with the private key when we're before we download the device we bury the, uh, the public key in the device so that we can decrypt back to the original hash uh, and then we can validate the the hashing mechanism so this can be done with a number of algorithms so there's the rsa um, but there's also specific algorithms for signing so there's a digital signature algorithm and then also an elliptic curve version of that uh, so the third one here ECDSA uh, runs very quickly uh, and also takes a, a smaller amount of memory in the device so this kind of is um, a preferred mechanism for uh, signing uh, devices uh, our MCU boot, uh, if we're designing a, a secure system, um, this is actually going to be our second stage bootloader. So within a microcontroller, particularly if we're putting something uh, that's going to act as an IoT device or is connected to the internet, we need to validate the MCU boot image before uh, it can validate the rest of the system. So this is reliant on having a secure boot uh, mechanism within the microcontroller. So increasingly newer devices which are designed for the IoT uh, will have a, a secure boot. And this is located in the ROM of the device, so it's immutable code. So in here we can use this to validate the second stage bootloader. The second stage bootloader will um, update images if any is available or it will validate the other images that are on the chip before it passes control to them. So we have this, this uh, chain of images before we get to our application image. And the secure boot image um, generally will take again a hash of the second stage bootloader. And this is very device specific, but uh, typically that hash will be put into some form of protected memory. So this may be flash memory that is programmed at manufacturer and then locked for the lifetime of the device. So again, we're burying a public key in the second stage bootloader the hash of that key is locked in the flash memory so that when it starts up we can validate this key which can then be used to validate the signature uh, of the overall uh, bootloader image. Uh, this establishes a root of trust in this second stage bootloader uh, which can then be used to validate and launch the remaining system. Uh, so this hash that's stored in the microcontroller becomes the anchor, the root of trust for our system uh, as the, the system is, is booted up. So MCU boot itself uh, will sit in the first sector of flash on the, the, the reset vector and then it will uh, uh, we'll split the rest of the memory into the primary slot where the main application image is, is going to run and our application image is built and linked to execute in place uh, from this primary slot. Uh, as we download images, we specify a secondary slot, which is a staging location for our update image. So again, MCU boot will uh, validate any image that's sitting in the secondary slot and then move it into the primary slot where it will become the executable image. There are a number of update strategies that we'll see in a moment. So there can be an additional swap slot uh, where the primary image is stored while we upgrade uh, to the new version. Uh, but we'll discuss that in a moment. Uh, the MCU boot is also designed to support multiple images. Um, so here we can have a, a, a um, our initial image uh, but we can have a number of these images um, again the ver the arm version of MCU boot is designed to support two images but I think the the bootloader itself is fairly unrestricted in the the number of additional images that it supports uh, but for each image we have a, a primary slot and then a, uh, a secondary slot where the update is stored so again uh, that's doubling up on our, our flash memory 
Uh, when we support multiple images, uh, the bootloader also supports a mechanism called chain loading. So as mentioned in the introduction, the bootloader itself will be validated by the secure boot. So this is a, a anchored to the uh, microcontroller via a hash stored in the protected flash. Uh, we can then validate the main bootloader, uh, which will itself contain the public keys for any other images that are in the system. So these will in turn be uh, validated independently and then we can pass execution to our main starting image. So here we're doing a process called chain loading uh, where we're bringing up and validating every image that's within the system. This also means that um, we can update these images separately. So rather than have one large monolithic image on our, our device that we have to upgrade every time we make a change, we can have a number of images which can all be updated independently, uh, meaning that we have to download uh, smaller amounts of, of code uh, and, and update. So within uh, MCU Boot, there is a main uh, configuration header and again, this is templated within the ARM version uh, to have a, a, a number of high level features that we uh, have to set up. As I mentioned, we're signing the device so we can choose the, uh, the signature mechanism and the key size. Um, we can specify the number of images uh, that are, we're going to support within the system. And again, at the moment, the ARM port supports uh, two images. Uh, we can have our key uh, within the um, stored within the bootloader itself, uh, or we can locate that within the uh, a hardware uh, key store within the, the device if it supports it. So we do have choice about where we're storing the, these keys. Uh, we also use a UR or the instrumentation trace to provide logging information as well. Uh, and then there are a number of update strategies um, which we can use uh, to um, at design time uh, to specify how we're going to update our, our devices. So the simplest one is overwrite, where we have our update image in the staging, the secondary slot. We validate that and then we overwrite the primary image. Uh, then it must work uh, because we have no mechanism to, to roll back. So again, uh, this is the simplest version that we can use, um, but it does mean that um, uh, we have to guarantee that, that that update is going to work. Uh, there's also swap. Uh, so in this case, uh, we copy the secondary image to the primary slot. We reboot the device um, and the original primary image uh, has been copied out to the, uh, the swap region. Uh, when the device reboots, it has to mark itself as running OK. Um, if that happens, uh, then uh, the um, uh, the new image will become permanent. If the device doesn't boot correctly, uh, on the next boot, um, we will take the original image that's stored in the swap sector and we'll roll that back into the, uh, the primary image. So if the upgrade fails, we have a mechanism of uh, restoring our original image. Uh, we can also boot code into RAM, so we copy the secondary image into a RAM region uh, and allow it to execute from there. And then finally, there's execute in place, uh, where we have our primary and our secondary slots. Um, here, we simply program in the image into the uh, 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 free slot. Um, and if that image is validated, it becomes the active image. So uh, we'll start to execute from the secondary slot. On the uh, next upgrade, we'll go back to executing from the primary slot and ping pong between the two slots. So this means that we've either got to build our code um, so that it um, is executes as position independent code, or every time we upgrade, we have to build our code so that it executes from the slot where it's going to be stored. So there's a bit of extra work or a bit of extra risk uh, when we use the execute in place. Um, the, um, as we'll see when we look at the um, signing tools, uh, the um, 
uh, MCU boots, boot support uh, versioning. And uh, ideally, if our microcontroller provides support through a set of uh, monotonic counters, uh, we can also provide anti-rollback as well. So we can't downgrade images um, and put back in bugs accidentally or uh, have a, a malicious attacker uh, downgrade to a version that um, he can subvert the device. Uh, in addition, we also have dependency checking. So if we have two images in our system, um, when we upgrade, um, we can say that this image uh, shouldn't be used or should only be used uh, where the second image has a minimum um, version number. So we, we compare images and we can avoid getting into the situation where we upgrade and the new image um, uh, re requires a, a later version of the secondary image uh, again. So this is quite clever features uh, and uh, I say extremely useful in, in practice. Uh, as I've mentioned, there is an ARM uh, branch of MCU boot, and this is part of the platform security architecture and the trusted firmware. And here, um, ARM have uh, ported MCU boot to work particularly with uh, Cortex-M microcontrollers and they've also replaced the, the low level um, drivers with the um, uh, CMSIS drivers. So this makes it much easier uh, to port between devices. So it uses the CMSIS flash driver and also the CMSIS USART driver as well for, the, for diagnostics. Um, so the flash, um, if your device isn't supported, there's a custom uh, template, which is easy to add to your code. Uh, then you have to populate a few functions, uh, erase, flash program, etc. So it's work that you'd have to do anyway. Um, but the, um, the templating means that you're doing far less low level porting. Uh, there is um, uh, logging. Uh, this goes out through the UR or the instrumentation trace. Uh, so we can see the progress of uh, the, the, the upgrade within our, our debugger. Uh, so this has a number of levels. Um, typically, info is, is quite a useful one. Uh, if you have a problem, again, you've got a debug level. Uh, then as we get a more mature implementation, uh, we can go back to errors or warnings, and then for production, we can switch it off. Uh, but this does provide a lot of useful feedback uh, as you're starting to experiment with the, uh, with the bootloader. Now, the image itself um, has to be encapsulated with headers and trailers. Um, so you take the image, and on the front of it, we have a, a a uh, fixed size header and then at the end of the image there's some trailer metadata and then at the end of the image slot there's some further update metadata as well. So the image header uh, contains basic information about the upgrade so version um, versioning information load addresses etc. Uh, so this is again automatically generated by the tools and wrapped around your original image. Uh, but here we now have a number of bytes at the beginning of the image. Uh, so we have to make sure we allow for those when we're uh, relocating the, the vector table. And then at the end, um, rather than use a, a fixed um, image trailer, uh, it uses a, a set of records uh, called type value length pairs. So these, I think, are a bit like a, a, a JSON record, that they've got a, a key uh, followed by a value. So it means that the bootloader can parse through the image trailer without having to have a, a fixed set of records um, that it, it automatically goes through. So this means it's much more flexible um, to store a set of records at the end and then parse those and, and take out the values um, depending, and that can vary very easily depending on the, uh, the, the build of the um, MCU boot that you're using. Then at the very end of the record slot, there is a, a set of upgrade uh, information. So as the uh, image is being updated, um, we're keeping a record uh, of the, um, uh, the, the image as it's copied. Uh, in here, we're also storing encrypted 
encrypted keys. So it's possible to encrypt the image and then we store the uh, the encryption key which has been wrapped, i.e. it's been encrypted uh, within this block. And then inside the device we have a master key, a key of keys which is used to decrypt the encryption keys. Uh, we're also, as I say, keeping track of the swap information, copy and image OK. So this, bot, this block is effectively used uh, to validate the device and provide power failure protection. Uh, if the device isn't marked as being uh, upgraded successfully, if we're using the swap mechanism uh, on the next reboot, uh, this image, this uh, section will be inspected. If the upgrade wasn't successful, we'll roll back to the original image. If we're using encryption, when we copy the primary image into the swap slot, then the, um, uh, the image is encrypted. Uh, the upgrade image is decrypted and put into the primary slot. Uh, so again, all of the encryption decryption is successfully managed for us uh, within the uh, embed TLS. Uh, the encryption is done through the, uh, uses the um, advanced encryption standard uh, using the counter uh, chaining method and 128-bit key. So the image key is encrypted and stored in that trading block uh, and then we have a key of keys uh, which is held securely within the device and as I mentioned the images as they're moved around are encrypted and decrypted as necessary so the uh, unencrypted image is only ever exposed uh, when it's placed in the the primary slot uh, when we're designing our system uh, we have to uh, lay out the uh, memory for the um, uh, the microcontroller, uh, the the MCU boot, uh, primary and secondary slots. Um, this can be managed through the uh, CMS's zone utility. Uh, so here we can load a resource file uh, that describes our device, so its uh, its memory regions and also all of its uh, peripherals. Uh, we can split this into different zones uh, and these zones are application projects. So here we've got our bootloader, uh, here we have the trusted firmware, we could also have the, the non-secure code and then we're partitioning the memory resources between the bootloader and the trusted firmware. Um, once we've, we're happy with this we can uh, generate uh, the support files. So this will then create the linked scripts uh, startup code, but it also creates a memory layout header file as well. So this is basically a whole bunch of hash defines, uh, which within the ARM port of um, the MCU boot uh, are then picked up uh, by the uh, region definitions within the um, uh, each of the projects uh, to implement this memory map. So ARM have done a sort of templating mechanism that lies underneath the standard MCU boot that allows you to partition uh, the memory for the bootloader and also multiple application images as well. So this means setting the thing up uh, actually becomes uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, there's also a shared region of memory between the bootloader and the main application. Uh, so this allows us to provide a boot record to the application. Uh, and this is in the form of uh, measurements to the application image. So this is generally hashes that have been taken of the image uh, of the bootloader uh, and also versioning information as well. And we can uh, use this to create an attestation token. So this will also include a unique device ID uh, and then we can send a token to an attestation server to prove the identity of the device. So this is something that will become more and more important within um, uh, IoT type devices uh, in, the, in the sort of near future. Uh, but basically this is largely managed by the, uh, the bootloader and also by the attestation security service that's within the trusted firmware as well. So in terms of uh, generating the image, uh, there is a Python script called image tool. Uh, so we can download and install that and that's designed to run with Python 3. 
Uh, so this supports key generation for signing. Uh, it also supports image signing and it can um, uh, take an input as a hex file uh, or bin file and output either hex or bin. So there's a later version of this that now uh, will work with a hex tool. Previously, we had to generate a binary file, run that through the image tool and then post-process that to create a hex. Uh, but this is now all done within the, uh, the one tool. So in terms of how we would generate our signed image, uh, we generate the key. So we then use, sorry, that should be private key. Uh, so we use the private key to sign the image. Uh, we then uh, can embed either the, um, uh, the full key or the hash image of that key within the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, um, uh, the application code. Um, we will then um, define a, the header. So this is the uh, MCU boot header that goes on the front uh, and we can specify the size of that. So that will now be a fixed record size. So we'll know whereabouts our uh, startup vectors are located. Uh, we can then specify to pad out any unused area of the, the header. Uh, we can enable the, the boot measurements and uh, we can also specify the size of the slot that we're going to download our device into. So again, where we need to put that uh, image trailer. Uh, versioning, so there's also a, a versioning counter, so we can specify, sorry, a security counter, I beg your pardon. Uh, so we can allow that to increment or we can specify a value. And here we can also specify the version of our software as well and dependencies uh, for other images in here as well. Uh, the override update strategy and then finally the output hex file. And sorry, just to jump back to the top, I, I think I got this bit wrong. This is the public key that will be embedded uh, in the image and we'll use uh, the, um, uh, the uh, private key to sign it. And then we're embedding this key either in the image or its hash uh, if the key is stored, is pre-stored in the, in the hardware. So all of this runs as a, an image file and we can then easily integrate that into uh, our build system within the, the Kyle tools. So here uh, we just invoke this and uh, it will automatically generate a hex file, uh, which you can then download into the target. Uh, in terms of our uh, application code, uh, we can include a small client, so this boot util misc.c, and this includes a couple of functions. Uh, so we can set an upgrade here to be pending, and we can say if that's going to be a, a permanent upgrade or we want to do a test swap. So it will reboot and check that the, uh, the upgrade has uh, been managed successfully. Uh, then we can force a system reset to invoke the bootloader to do the upgrade. If we are doing a test swap in the new image, uh, we need to call this function boot set confirmed, and then this will mark um, the, uh, the upgrade as being successful, and then it will become a, a permanent upgrade. If the code fails, um, the device reboots, uh, it will then roll back to the, uh, the original um, or the earlier version uh, if, it, if the, the, uh, the update hasn't been confirmed. So that gives you an overview of MCU boot. Um, just a few sort of final thoughts. Uh, we're doing a lot of validation by uh, asymmetric um, uh, algorithms. So this is generally quite slow. Um, so I think there are plans after the uh, initial validation in the device, uh, we'll validate the, the images when we reboot using a message authentication code or a, a, a Mac. Uh, and this will use a hardware unique key that's uh, again, pre-stored in the device. So this is much faster than using asymmetric uh, cryptography. Um, so it'll give us again, a, a much faster boot uh, should we need it. Uh, there isn't a revocation method um, if our signing key gets compromised. Uh, 
Um, however, many of the uh, first stage bootloaders, boat, boot, boot bootloaders uh, do provide this. Uh, so we can revoke a key and then use a different uh, key to upgrade the, the bootloader. So this, again, may be introduced in MCU boot in the future, um, but you should investigate devices that provide revocation uh, through the secure boots. Uh, in some cases, you, you might um, be tempted to look at um, creating projects that are using uh, position independent code rather than absolutely located code. Uh, unfortunately, some of the libraries that are within, uh, certainly within Kyle, are designed to uh, execute in uh, as absolutely linked code. Uh, so they wouldn't work with a relocatable system. So that, that does give us a problem. I think the, the the full library that's provided with the ARM compiler, so the, the ARM libraries, uh, will support position independent code, but they are a bit more bulky than uh, the Kyle microlib. Uh, if you brick both images, um, then uh, you've used, there's no recovery mechanism. Uh, but to do one failing upgrade uh, is an accident. To do two, hmm. Um, also, the swap area in this case may get used quite a lot as well, uh, so that can become uh, vulnerable to uh, uh, wearing out the, the flash over time. Uh, but I think this is a worry, but it, the, unless you're planning to do lots and lots of upgrades, I think is, is a bit of a non-issue. Um, we program the flash on boards during development a large number of times and I've, I've never really seen the, the flash wear out. Uh, so as Wolfgang mentioned at the beginning, we have um, uh, a extended webinar on the 21st of April. So this is looking at a project uh, that we did um, a, a little while back. Uh, this was uh, introducing um, uh, analysis of the of train doors on the Barcelona underground. So we wanted to be able to detect faults in advance um, and uh, so we could do preventative maintenance. So it's quite an interesting project and so it's a good example of a sort of industrial or rail type um, internet of things type project. Uh, so we want to go through all the key stages of that project. So if you're interested, please join us uh, on the 21st of, of April. Thank you.